This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review and this is the new Apple iPad. And here you can see it next to the iPhone 3GS to get an idea of the size of the iPad. Obviously it's a fairly large device and it weighs 1.5 pounds, but you can certainly get a lot more screen real estate. It's 1024 by 768 pixels. Makes movies look absolutely awesome in web browsing. So when you start out here you have, just like the iPhone, you can go to search on the first screen and all your apps show up on each screen. It's a very fast device. It's running Apple's custom CPU. And you've got the dock down here just like the iPhone and the iPod Touch for your iPod, your photos, your mail, and Safari by default. Before we take a look at the software, we're going to take a look around the hardware. Here's the ubiquitous single Apple press button here that gets you back home. And there are very few ports on this. Up top, this is the power button right here. This is a three and a half millimeter stereo jack. Volume control, the hold switch are on the side. Speaker grill here. Standard Apple 30 pin dock connector here. Your iPhone cable, iPod touch cables will both work. This does not have a USB port. That's a $30 optional accessory. Nothing on that side. And then here's the back. A lot like the first gen iPhone with the silver back. This is the 32 gig model. You can get them in 16, 32, and 64 gig models with Wi Fi. The 3G model will be coming in several more weeks. So you can see it has an accelerometer. First, we'll take a look at the iTunes Store. And all of this is done over Wi Fi. So this doesn't really look like your iPhone, does it? It looks a lot more like desktop iTunes. Let's see something. The animations are obviously beautiful here. There's an album so you can choose to buy tracks or buy the entire album. And to go back you just tap behind the window. And it goes back. And the genius feature is also on board. So down here we have music, movies, TV shows, podcasts, audiobooks, iTunes U, and downloads. Let's check it out movies. We'll see what that interface is like. And there it is and you can get a preview. You can also do an HD and standard definition. So we'll see what the preview looks like. Nice. And you can see the controls work just like the iPhone. And TV shows work similarly. Next we'll take a look at iBooks. Again, this guy works in portrait and landscape modes. And these are some free public domain books that we downloaded from Apple's new iBook store. And just like you've seen on the demos, there it is. You can swipe through the pages, beautiful animations. It's very paper-like. It This is a gloss screen and it is backlit, so it may be tiring to the eyes compared to a dedicated ebook reader. You can change your fonts there. Nice selection of fonts. There's the brightness because bright screens are tiring to the eyes. And you can do searching here. And when you're done, you can go back to your library. Now you can't sideload books. That's pretty important to know. You can get books on here using the Amazon Kindle app, which we're going to show you, the iBookstore app. When Barnes & Noble has an app, you can put it on there. Even though this supports unprotected non-DRM EPUB books, if you have any, uh, there's no way to get them on. We tried the third-party utility called File Magnet to do that and it doesn't really work just yet. You can get you can get documents on there but there's no association for those. Now if you want to go shopping for books when you're in the Apple iBook store you hit the store button and there you are and so far supposedly there are about 60,000 titles of course some of those are public domain. Prices are $9.99, $11.99, $12.99 for most best sellers.
want to see more about a book, just tap on it. And you can download a sample. And it's that quick. Generally it's probably going to be like Amazon where you just get the first chapter. The formatting is really beautiful on this, I have to say. Very sophisticated. And of course, with Apple's own iBook app, if you put it in portrait mode, you have the facing pages view. And the text is still pretty readable, it's not too tiny since this is a large screen. When you're in the book, if you want to buy it, of course, they have a nice buy button up here. Next for your bookish types, we're going to take a look at the Amazon Kindle app that's ready at launch. And here it is. We're already inside of a book, so it just picks up where we left off. This doesn't have as many fancy features in the UI. For example, if you put it in landscape mode, it just goes in landscape mode. There's no facing pages. Still quite nice looking and, and readable. Some of the paragraph break breaks are a little bit strange here. We have a big space here. We have actually no space between the paragraphs here. Change page, it's just like that. If you tap on it, you can change the... Do that, for example. Ooh. There's the sepia. Background is pretty subtle. There's white. And reverse for you old DOS types. Sepia is probably the easiest on the eyes. And here you can go to the table of contents, the beginning of the book, the cover, or one of those strange Amazonian like location numbers since they don't actually do page numbers in the world of Amazon ebooks. Oh, speaking of which, there's the keyboard. Let's just show you that. And here is the keyboard right now. It's switching to numbers automatically because locations are n numerics. And here is the QWERTY keyboard, which is quite easy to type on and quite large. Next, we'll take a look at Google Maps, which, even though this device does not have 3G, it does have a GPS built in. And here we left it in satellite view, which you can see is a pretty attractive thing. You can pinch and zoom. Typical Apple fashion. Scroll around. And if you go here, just like the iPhone, you can switch back to classic map, satellite hybrid or terrain, and you can get traffic overlays. And you can drop a pin. There is no street view on this. Certainly a very easy way to use a map, though. And again, that works in landscape as well as portrait. Take a quick look at the YouTube player. This is a giant version of the iPhone iPod Touch player, and the video so far have been high quality. I know YouTube has been working and trying to improve the quality. And we will just pick some random video. So here you get the tags, the information about related videos, more from that author, and comments too. So it's small there. If you want to play it full screen, you just switch it to landscape mode. For YouTube, that's, that's pretty high quality. Strange video of a floating chair. And now for something truly cool, we're going to take a look at the Netflix app. Since we have a Netflix account, we can actually stream content directly to the iPad. So here we are, streaming a Netflix movie. Again, the sound quality is surprisingly good. If it looks a little dark to you, well, it looks a little dark to us in person, too. This is a really beautiful and bright IPS display, but if there's any sun in the room at all, dark scenes, even medium scenes, do kind of fade. You're going to watch movies in darkness, if you can, or in shade. You have the same contacts, the calendar, and notes applications that you do on the, the iPhone and the iPod Touch. You can also set the wallpaper background, change it to what you want it to be. And now we're going to take a look at games, because obviously that's going to be a real exciting platform for this. First we're going to take a look at one that was made for the iPad, called the Sherlock Holmes Mysteries.
So you want to pan around in this game. You do it like that. You want to talk to somebody. This is a game made for the iPad. It's called Go Ladybug Go. Nice sound. And again, for something like a game where the brightness is set pretty high, the screen really looks beautiful. Controls are easy to use on screen. Next we're going to take a look at Final Fantasy. This is actually an iPhone iPod touch game. This is not optimized to the iPad. Now I know some of the early written reviews made it sound like when you run an iPhone app it always runs just in the small window. And for some applications that might be true, like file magnet and utility, but this guy stretches and fills the screen and the graphics are good enough. That actually looks pretty good in stretch mode. This is pretty awesome fun here. Classic RPG game. We've already gotten ourselves in trouble in a fight. That looks, that looks really nice for something that's been stretched from the iPhone size screen. And the sound is killer. This is really going to excel at gaming. And we're going to take a look at two more things, the internet stuff. We're going to look at email and Safari. So just so you can see the email interface, uh, it's kind of a large stretched out version of what you get on the iPhone again. Here's your inbox. Over here, if you had messages, they'd be listed, and if you tapped on a message, it would show up in this large screen. Pretty easy to use. And now we'll take a look at Safari. And there we are on our website. Zoom to be read across the room if you want to. And the control is quite good. And here we have an embedded YouTube video in this review, and as you can see, just like with the iPhone, it's going to substitute the mobile version of the video so you're not just looking at some broken flash player link. So that is an embedded YouTube video playing even though there's no flash support. There's CNN loading very quickly. They have themselves featuring the iPad. There are embedded videos here. What happens if you tap on one? Let's see. Anderson Cooper, AC360, CNN Weeknights. Again, it's substituting, I guess, the mobile version of the video. For the past few nights, we've been reporting on allegations of physical. So that's CNN. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the iPad from Apple. It's available now. Starting price is $500 for the 16 gig model, and the prices go up for each higher capacity model that you choose. The 3G models will be out in less than a month. Visit our website to read the full review.